Hello class, Dr. Bowers Office Hours here, and today we're going to talk about the experience machine, a hypothetical situation that was proposed by the philosopher Robert Nozick, which has since been used as an objection to utilitarianism. Here's some study guide questions to get us started. First, what does utilitarianism predict about the best possible life for a person? Secondly, what is the experience machine? Third, what question does the experience machine raise for utilitarianism? Fourth, what, according to Nozick, does the experience machine show? Fifth, how could we use the experience machine to argue against utilitarianism? And finally, how might the utilitarian respond to this experience machine-based objection? As always, as you follow along, you may want to have a pad and a pencil or a laptop in order to take notes and to record the answers to these questions as they come up in the lecture. So, <clears throat> what does utilitarianism have to say about the best possible life for an individual, or at least the morally best life? Remember, utilitarianism measures moral value in terms of the happiness that uh, various things produce. So an action is as morally good as the happiness it produces in people. The more happiness there is, the morally better things are. And the more happiness you produce, the morally better your actions are. So when we ask what according to utilitarianism would be the best possible life for an individual, morally speaking, it would be one that has the most pleasure in it, probably. Of course, when you propose this, People will initially object and say, if you had nothing but pleasure, if all you had were good times and good feelings, well, you wouldn't have a sufficient contrast class to be able to really appreciate the good times. You wouldn't be able to appreciate the good without some bad. And really, some good times are much more rewarding if you have to struggle in order to get them, if you have to learn a few things and improve on yourself in order to get them, and so on. So maybe... Instead of saying that the best possible life for an individual, according to utilitarianism, is a life that has the most pleasure, let's say that the best possible life for an individual, according to utilitarianism, has a certain correct balance of pleasure and pain. That's what the best life for an individual would be, is some balance of pleasure and pain, presumably as much pleasure as possible, and as much pain as is minimally necessary in order to make that pleasure most appreciable and, and, and best and all of those things, right? Some kind of balance like that. So first thing to note that if you ask what the best life is, morally speaking, if you're not involving anyone else and you're just asking about one individual, the best possible life is a balance of pleasure and pain. You know, as much pleasure as possible, and as much pain as is minimally necessary to appreciate it. Okay, well, let's turn to the topic of the experience machine. If you've seen the film The Matrix, which I guess is like 20 years old now, uh, you might be familiar with this concept. The experience machine, proposed by Robert Nozick, is a virtual reality machine. It's a system that you're hooked up to all by yourself, and this system will keep you alive, and it will feed you, and it will keep your muscles from atrophying, and all of that stuff, so don't worry about that. And it will feed you, it will feed your senses and your brain data that will allow you to have whatever experiences are programmed into the experience machine, right? So if someone programmed into the experience machine the sensation of being in a hot air balloon floating over the Andes, well, whoever's hooked up to the experience machine would have the experience of being in a hot air balloon floating over the Andes. And if somebody had put in the experience of writing the great American novel and put in weeks and weeks of uh, trying and failing and crumpling up passages and then finally belting out the final draft, then you could have the person in the experience machine also feel like that's what they were doing, writing the great American novel, struggling with their own abilities, editing their own work, or whatever you want, you know? You want to fly around in space like Captain Marvel? Uh, someone could program it into the experience machine, and if you were hooked up to it, you wouldn't be able to tell 
that you weren't flying around in space like Captain Marvel. Which brings us to an important point about the experience machine, which is this. The experiences it feeds the user are indistinguishable from real life. If you were hooked up to it, there's no way that you would be able to tell that it wasn't real. Everything would be perfectly as realistic as possible. So, think about the experience machine. It could give you any set of experiences that you want, right? Whatever kind of life you'd enjoy having, you could get that sort of life in the experience machine. It wouldn't be real, but you couldn't tell that. So, here's a question. Could you live the best possible life in the experience machine? Could the best possible life for an individual be lived in the experience machine? How about according to the utilitarian? Aha. So, in order to avoid certain distractions when we talk about this, the quality of life in the experience machine, let's pretend that we're looking at someone who's been raised in the experience machine since birth. Maybe they were like cloned and, 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 and created in some kind of vat, and then as soon as they were capable of having experiences in consciousness, zap, we hooked them up to the experience machine. Right? So they've lived what seems to be to them a normal life, except for we've rigged it ahead of time to make sure that it's the best possible life uh, that a person could live as far as pleasure and pain is concerned, right? This person presumably would uh, have a virtual childhood in a virtual neighborhood that was safe, nurturing, and supportive, that they would virtually make certain mistakes, but then virtually recover for them. They'd have virtual teachers that taught them virtual English, and they would have virtual friends, right? Imagine someone being raised in the experience machine, right? And their entire life, they've known nothing but virtual experiences. They don't know that, and they can't know it, but here's the question. Is it possible for such a person to live the best possible life for an individual? Could the best possible life be lived that way? Right? If only you programmed it right. Of course, if we programmed uh, that person's experiences to be miserable and all of their virtual life was uh, a series of torrid affairs and, 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 and troubles, then, you know, that, that wouldn't be good. But if it were possible to live one's entire life in the experience machine, and if it were also possible to put in that ideal balance of pleasure and pain, couldn't the best possible life be lived in the experience machine? It seems like the answer has to be yes, according to the utilitarian. For remember, according to the utilitarian, the best life for an individual, morally speaking, is to have as much pleasure as possible and as much pain as is minimally necessary to appreciate it. And that's what you can get with the experience machine. So according to utilitarianism, the experience machine would allow you to live the best possible life, even if you never, ever, 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 ever left it as a user. How does that sound to you? Does that sound a little funny? According to Nozick, you should recoil at this conclusion. There's something about it that should strike you as wrong. The person who's raised in the experience machine, they might not be able to know this, but there's something that's bad about their life. It's all fake. Again, that's not something that they can be aware of. They have no idea how bad it is that their life is fake. They will never know. But it's still a bad thing about their life. Compare this to a person who's woefully ignorant, someone who's just ignorant of everything and doesn't know a single thing that there's worth knowing, right? That person probably does not know their ignorance, and they're probably not in a position to ever be able to discover their ignorance, right? They'll never know it. But it's still a bad thing about them. It's still a bad thing about their condition that they are ignorant. It's just they can't be aware of that bad thing about their condition. Likewise, for the person who's raised in the experience machine, they can never know that their whole life is a fake, but we can still say that it's a bad thing about their life that it's fake. Moreover, thinks Nozick, the badness of the life being fake cannot be 
compensated for or measured in terms of more pleasure. There's no amount of pleasure that you can add which will suddenly remove the fact that it's a fake, that will, that will just negate that, right? It's being a fake seems to be a separate sort of concern that's independent of pleasure or pain, right? So what Nozick thinks is that the experience machine reveals to us something. It reveals to us that in addition to pleasure and pain, one thing that matters for a life is whether it's real, whether it's connected to reality, whether it's, as we might say, authentic. That's the idea. So with that in mind, let's put together an argument against utilitarianism, which uses the experience machine. Here's how it goes. Premise one, if utilitarianism is true, then the best possible life could be lived entirely in the experience machine. Two, but it's not true that the best possible life could be lived entirely in the experience machine. Three, so utilitarianism is not true. That's the argument. Note one thing that the argument does not assume. It does not assume that no matter what, it would be bad to live in the experience machine. Maybe the world uh, gets so bad that you'd want to live in the experience machine all the time, right? What the argument is just saying is that that life couldn't be the best possible life. The best possible life would not only have to contain the ideal balance of pleasure and pain, but also be authentic, connected to reality. That would be best. So, how can the utilitarian respond to all this? Well, it's pretty difficult. This is a famous objection to utilitarianism, and every utilitarian since has wrestled with it one way or another. But here's an interesting take, and this is in a way inspired by the Matrix as well. Suppose someone told you that your whole life has been in the experience machine, that everyone that you've known so far has been a virtual representation. All of your friends have been video game characters, your family just video game characters. Everyone is a facade. No one is real except for you. It's all been a video game. Does that mean that you should just automatically forsake your whole life and pursue whatever mystery may be in the real world? The character of Neo in The Matrix just brazenly makes that choice like it doesn't even matter, and the movie helps us sympathize with that choice by setting up a life beforehand that's drab and unrewarding. But assuming that you found many things in your actual life dear, would you really just unplug from it because you found out it wasn't real? That's one way the utilitarian might respond, is to downplay the intrinsic value of this authenticity. Um, but that's maybe for another day. For now, thanks for watching this video on the experience machine. Next time we're going to talk about a certain problem utilitarians have when it comes to ranking pleasures, or talking about pleasures that are better than other pleasures. See you next time.